Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Credit Mobiler. Ah, why do I go with this game? All right, so it's a train game. It's not as good as any other train game. Uh, you know, it's set somewhere in between Ticket to Ride and Transamerica. Uh, it has a little bit of the stock thing going on. And that, it, for such a light game, is going to trip some people up, especially non-gamers or early gamers. But I call people early into the into the early gaming, is that there is money held by the companies that no one else has. Now you have to extract that money from the companies by having them pay dividends by the dice. You are not going to be able to do what you want on a turn. You have to roll the dice and hope you get the best. Sometimes the dice are just not going to be on your side. Now, granted, you're going to tell me, well, well, that should even out over a game. Perhaps in a long game. And this game isn't exactly short. It's not long, but you know, it's not a filler. Um, yeah, maybe. But if you can't do what you want to do when you want to do it, it takes something away from you. Now, in something like War of the Ring, uh, the game balance almost demands you not being able to do what you want to do when you want to do it. I suppose that's the same way here. When do you go for it? You have the wild, you have the orange. It's okay. I didn't feel like there was a lot of value in me building track. If you're a careful gamer, you all should end up with relatively the same stock if you wanted to. Uh, if somebody lets you get all of the blue and you spend all those turns getting all the blue stock, there's not going to be any blue track laid. I don't know. I think some people are going to like this game. I wanted to like it. It has aspects that I would like. Choo choo, there's trains in it. But it didn't really click for me. I feel like maybe if I would have played it when it came out, and then other games would have taken me somewhere else. Well, I missed this because it's on my shelf because of this ugly, weird box. And I sailed right past it, and then I went back to it. I was like, I don't know. It's probably a little light for me. It relied a little bit too much on the dice. Maybe Trains and Stations has replaced it for me, although it never was for me. Um, the components aren't really appealing to me. I'm going to go ahead and say this is probably a game that you need to try out. I'm going to purge it. I don't mean to seem down on it because it's not a terrible game. It's not a bad game. It works. It works as intended. <sighs> but maybe I played it a few years too late. I hope that's fair to the designer, the publisher, and the game itself. Um, I just may have played it too late. So this is something I would say, man, if you have some interest in it, try it out as a con, or try it out buddies. I don't know how expensive it is. I can't imagine it being a rare grail game. Maybe you can get it pretty cheap. Um, the components are just horrific. Like these little tillywink things and uh, no, purge, purge. Here are the components for Credit Mobiler. This is a game that's been on my shelf for quite a while. This this cover wasn't very striking to me. And to be honest, a lot of Rio Grande games have kind of aged to me. What you're going to get is a rule book. A very simple rule set. Of a lot of words. Uh, very few colors. You are going to get some Tillywinks. Little plastic ones. Some dice that just have colors. Almost like a smaller Haba type thing. 
and some of these little small wooden, which will end up being rail connectors. Uh, you're going to get a board that is miniature. For such a big box, the game is actually really small. The board, you know, doesn't even take up hardly any space on a table. You are going to get cubes in different colors, and you're going to get stocks. And all these stocks are going to be the same, they're just in different colors, and they're just cards that you'll be getting. And that's the components. Uh, I would say the components are a little bit aged, a lot of wooden cubes and these kind of generic dice that you know, you've seen in a lot of children's games. These little wooden things, the board being over small, it's not going to jump out at you whatsoever. Pretty simple in this game, really. Honestly, you have four things you can do. You can build a track, you can buy some shares, you can uh, move some cubes and build some track. That's all there is. Did I say the same thing twice? Pay dividends. That's the other one. Um, there's not a whole lot to do, and you're kind of, you know, it's a little tricky with the dies. With the, you're throwing in the orange and the purple for such a light game. I liked the rules. I didn't really have a problem with them. You know, it's confusing to people sometimes when, when when you read it, it all makes sense. But when you're teaching it, who gets paid and what gets paid and how it gets paid. And each option is a little bit different. And I'm not sure it's always intuitive um, how they get paid. It, it, it works for the game, but I'm not sure it's intuitive. And that might hold the rule book back just a tad. But that's not the book itself as much as the rules, I suppose. So um, all that said, you're not going to have a problem learning this game at all. Beginning of a turn, what you're going to do is you're going to roll these five dice. And these dice will be used by the other players until there's only one left. When there's one left, you can re-roll them all. Purple is wild. Uh, so purple always acts as the credit mobile, or which is the purple stock there. Uh, what you can do in your turn is you can build a track. Uh, to do so, um, you take a track section matching a color that you rolled. Um, so let's say you used yellow. And you could build two tracks of yellow anywhere you want on the board. And what happened was, would be you would take $2 from the bank and put it in the credit mobile of treasurer, which is the purple. If you want to buy stock, you pay a dollar for each stock purchased, and you can just buy whatever color you want. If you had rolled a green, you can buy one stock, or you buy two. So with the purple being wild, I could buy three green stock. One for the green, and the purples are wild. And they have to play off of the green. So I could buy three stocks at a buck a peach. Um, the bank receives the money paid for the stock. Then you can move good. So let's say I wanted to move uh, a green. Um, you move based on the color. So if I wanted to move green, say I use these dice to move green three, I could go one, two, move green two spaces. Now, the yellow company, because we use their track, we get two bucks for each one that goes across. And what you're trying to do is get all of these over the Pacific Coast. And when there's only two colors left, cubes, the game will end. You can also pay dividends. Uh, if you roll an orange, that will help you pay dividends. Um, so whatever amount of money that a company is able to, the companies will get the money and they will divvy it evenly by anybody who owns the stock, the share in the stock. So if I own three, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go around, if it keeps going around like three times, like Tom gets, Sally gets, Bill gets it, Tom gets it, if he had three shares, he would get paid again. If Sally and Bob didn't have any, it would keep getting paying him as long as there's money left in the treasury of the green stock. I think that made sense. Um, so those are the only things you can do. You can build track, you can move the goods, you can buy a stock, or you can pay the dividends. And what you're trying to do at the end of the game, uh, have the most cash. So if you're able to pay out the dividends when you buy up what has a lot of cash in it, because you want those dividends to pay out uh, when you're able to monopolize on it. But if there's a lot of money being saved up, say on green, um, everybody else will start buying green up. There's no way to sell your stock. Uh, so you'll be sharing that money with a lot of people. So it's a really quick, pretty easy game. You know, the dice are gonna play into it based on what you're able to what you're able to utilize and use. Um, 
you know, if the dice are really against you in the game, you're probably not going to do as well as you would have. Uh, but that's how you play it for the most part. You know, you just utilize whatever you rolled to pick what you're going to move, or we're going to buy, or we're going to pay a dividend out, or we're going to build track. But you're going to need track on this board in order to build up a company. So if you build up a whole bunch of yellow on the board, if you brought a whole bunch of yellow stock, then you want to move things across the yellow track in order to score more cash and get that payout when the dividends pay out. So that's Credit Mobiler. this game first of all if you like Rio Grande games I mean their games are a little bit bland to me when I say bland I mean components I think components may have passed them by I Rio Grande games when I got into gaming was like one of the companies um, but they're kind of like Mayfair I think it's Mayfair now where um, the components are just 10 years ago I mean, you got these little round tiddlywinks and you got this and so this may be appealing to you, like, I just like the classic games, and I like the way they look, and I like to watch silent movies, and, and I like to play on my stenograph, and listen to music on CD, and I don't, I buy Blu-ray, DVDs, I never buy downward streaming, that's too new. Okay, so my father, my father would like this game. But for the rest of us in the United States, and America, and France, and England, and any other country on the planet... You like your games to look good, be pimped out a little bit, let's have some stuff in here. Now, if you have a really good game, uh, the components don't have to be fantastic. The gameplay will live past the components, but it brings it up, you know? It's like when you go to a job interview. Sure, there's no difference between you and sweats and a suit, but the suit just looks nicer, it presents differently, and it says something about you. I tried, right? Um... Credit Mobiler didn't dress up for me. And it kind of... Uh, and the game wasn't that great. Uh, or sometimes, you know, that, that, that miniature whoop, just, just a little bit gets you up, and you're like, I got it. This is all right. So, yeah, The look is going to turn some people off. Otherwise, the play, game plays okay. It's moving. Um, some turns, if you just don't get... You need to move something... Or, just to progress the darn game and the dice don't come up for four or five rolls and there's no purples and you're just like, ah, can we progress the game? But you can't just progress it because it will benefit one person more than the rest. So you sit around and you roll the die. Smarter men than me, people who played this game more and who like it more are probably like, that's what was intended. A light bulb goes off. But I found it not interesting. But for you. For you gamer who likes this game, I applaud you. For somebody who looks at this and says, this is the game for me, or maybe it just looks like an interesting game, don't let me blow it off for you. There's a game in the box here, just not one for me. I think I'm going to stick with Ticket to Ride, Age of Steam, Transamerica, and that kind of thing that might take this for me, Trains and Stations, uh, that might fill this gap for me. Um, and th These reviews are more about not whether the game is terrible or great, but... Does it fit into my collection? And why doesn't it fit into my collection? I think it was late to the party. And when it showed up late, I was already in an interesting conversation with somebody else. Credit Mobiler will be perfect.